All right. Thank you so much for joining us. Welcome to Making Study Abroad Affordable. Uh, my name is Andrew Bottom, and I'm the Associate Director for the Global Internship Program here at the IEO office, and I'll have my colleague also introduce herself. Hi, everyone. Welcome. I'm Kelly Siniga, and I'm the Associate Director for Advising and Outreach. Welcome. And so today's session is going to focus on making study abroad affordable. So before we get into the session, just wanted to introduce who we are in case it's the first time you're getting to know our office. So we are from the UCLA International Education Office. We are a one-stop shop for everything study abroad on the UCLA campus. We have lots of different advisors and coordinators who are helping, who want to help make your study abroad experience successful and exciting. So if you need any assistance throughout your process of applying for study abroad, when you are abroad, um, or just any questions, we're there in Murphy Hall to assist you. Um, we also can connect you with returning study abroad students. So if you have questions you want to ask a student, we have a lot of returnees that would love to connect with you to share their experience. In today's presentation, we're going to talk about how to identify affordable programs, like what sort of things do you want to think about when you're considering studying abroad. We'll discuss financial aid, scholarship opportunities, how to budget for your study abroad experience, as well as next steps for applying for study abroad. All right, let's discuss how to identify affordable programs. To be honest, this is the best way to save money while studying abroad is selecting the right program for the experience you're hoping to get. So when you are considering studying abroad, it's really important to note that you're not paying double. So there's this myth that you're paying, some students think they have to pay UCLA tuition and a study abroad fee. You're not paying a uh, double, you're only paying your study abroad program fee. So depending on the program that you identify uh, to study abroad with, your experience could be more affordable than studying at UCLA. It could be quite equivalent or it could be more expensive. And the next slides, we're going to discuss the different um, uh, things that go into considering what cyber opportunity might make sense for you, um, depending on the duration, the credits, the uh, the major you're studying in. There's a lot of different uh, logistics that go into it, and we're hoping to help you uh, figure out how to identify the uh, affordable programs uh, for you um, that will help you study abroad. All right, so I'm going to start talking about the categories that we offer here. So what are the different offerings that we offer here at the Study Abroad Office? So the first point here is the UCLA Education Abroad Program. These are our system-wide opportunities. So anytime that you hear UCEAP during this application, we are referring to these system-wide opportunities. They happen throughout the year. You can find summer programs, fall, winter, spring, and year long. And what's unique about these is that courses are taught by hosts country instructors in all options and within that there's even a lot more varity so you have traditional university immersion language and culture special focus based on major academic track and research opportunities internships many more now we also have UCLA travel study. These only take place during the summer. They are UCLA faculty led. So anytime you hear travel study, we're talking about these special opportunities. And then we have UCLA global internship program. These happen in the summer only, and you can get UCLA academic credit. Uh, the internships are not paid. So if you hear global internship program or GIP, just know that's what we are referring to. All right, so I went over the broader programs that we offer or the categories. Now I'm going to talk about when to go as one of the factors of affordability. So during the year, uh, if you go in the fall, it's generally more expensive because these, are, these programs are through UCEAP and most of them are for a semester. So you're abroad for a semester versus a quarter. You're spending more time abroad, you are earning more units, and therefore you are accumulating these expenses. So if affordability is a concern for you, then the fall might not be the best time to go in terms of cost. In the spring, you are going abroad generally for a semester, and therefore they're often less expensive because you are getting less units and you are taking less courses. Now, I just wanna say this is different from a spring quarter program or a winter quarter program. There are some through UCEAP, but most of them will be spring semester programs. 
Now, although the cost is less, it might result in less units and courses. In the summer, what's great is that non-California residents, you pay the same amount as a California resident. The non-resident supplement is not required. However, keep in mind that financial aid tends to be more loan heavy. There are less grant funds that are available, and we'll talk about this more later in the presentation. Now, I'm hoping you will be the student that goes abroad for a whole year. I am definitely biased, but I'll say that if you go abroad for a year, it's about the same or less than being at UCLA. And multi-site programs, I want to point these out and highlight these because we have some great programs that will take you to different cities in one term for spring quarter, for example, or spring semester. Students love these. They get to go to more than one location, uh, but it can add significant cost. Uh, there are also some available in the summer that are multi-site. Another factor to consider when you are selecting a study abroad program is the location. So the cost of living is really going to differ depending on the location that you study abroad. So thinking about your housing, your local transit options, meals, airfare, if there's any visa requirements, if you're in a large city versus a small town, just think about Los Angeles. It's one of the you know most expensive places to live in the United States versus a smaller or medium-sized city, higher cost of living here in LA. And so when you're considering a study abroad program, really that cost of living goes into um, you know if the program might be more expensive or not. Um, now, below, we have some examples of locations that might be more expensive or more affordable. Please note these are a little bit generalized because this doesn't take into consideration the number of units, the length of time of the program. But in general, we oftentimes see that in Africa, Australia, and Europe, that programs tend to be more expensive and that more affordable programs tend to be in locations such as Mexico, Central America, South America, Hong Kong, Japan, and Southeast Asia. But again, on the program page, when you're searching uh, your study abroad locations, you'll learn a lot more about your particular program. And it is possible that you can find a program that's more affordable in some of these supposedly more expensive locations. Now, here's some examples of some cost comparisons for some summer programs. So as you, as we mentioned at the start, um, Kelly was talking about the Global Internship Program, UCAP, and Travel Study. I just want to take a, a look real quickly here at those first three. So we have a program in Colombia for GIP, a UCAP program in Mexico, and a Travel Study program in New York City. So these are all in the Americas. You can notice that the pricing is generally similar in sense of about a $1,000 difference between the three programs, but you will notice that the length is going to be considerably different. So in Colombia, it's eight weeks, it's five weeks in Mexico, four weeks in New York. The units is also different. So in Colombia, the students are doing an internship, only receiving eight units. In Mexico and New York, they're doing 10 and 11 units. Um, and then, of course, the Air Force or the locations or the other budget expenses, which we didn't really break down into the granular sense, but are things like, you know, cost of living. So your meals, incidentals, transportation um, can differ depending on the location. So this is just kind of an example to show that um, you need to really look into your program a bit further than just the overall cost, because you'll see how many units you might receive, how long your duration will be while you're on site, as well as, you know, the airfare can be considerably different or your cost of living in terms of transportation and meals and IE. On the far right hand side, we'll see two other UCAP programs. These programs are in Europe, so in Ireland and in London, both very popular programs or physics programs is one of our most popular because students are able to take two uh, courses in physics and their physics sequence, um, as well as London School of Economics tends to be a very popular program. But you will see in terms of um, economic or economical programs, they are quite expensive in comparison to the first three. You'll see that for um, both physics in Ireland and the School of Economics, they're almost double, or if not more than double, of the cost of the first three programs that we uh, presented. Um, but they might make sense for you depending on the academic objectives you're trying to reach. So just wanted to show you this graphic just to, to mention that really selecting your program is gonna be the first step in really assisting you with that overall budget. So before we even talk about budgeting and financial aid and scholarships, the biggest way to say Save money is really selecting the program that's right for you. And now we'll move on to the next slide. All right, so I'm going to talk about programs during the academic year and highlight some of the program costs. 
during the year. So I think it's important to benchmark against UCLA, right? What does it cost to be here on campus? And so we're looking here at fall quarter. So in the fall quarter, you can really find programs that are close in cost or programs that are more expensive. Again, depending on where you're going, how long you're going for. I started off by saying that fall semester programs are typically more expensive because you're there for a longer period of time and you're completing more units. So UCLA, the cost, the estimated cost for this year, fall quarter is 12,839 for uh, tuition fees, cost of living, and other things, right? So that's a quarter is 10 weeks with finals week 11 weeks. Now compared to Japan, you can see that the price is actually lower than being here, even though you have things like airfare to account for. You are also abroad for a longer period of time for 15 weeks. So it's really a good deal if you're looking at cost only. Then we have a program like Carlos III in Spain. You are abroad for a fall semester, 17 weeks. You are doing more units than you are here at UCLA, almost double if you're only enrolled in 12 normally on campus. And as you can see, the price is more, right? So you are paying more to be there for a longer period of time. It makes sense in terms of the cost, but it may not make sense for you if you are looking for a program that is more affordable during the year, you want to keep your cost around the same. Now let's look at a full year. I said that a full year can be very close and sometimes it can mean a lot of savings actually. So again, a full year on campus, you could see it's about $38,517. If you go to Yonsei in South Korea, a full year, you spend a month more, you get about the same units that you would here at UCLA and you're looking at about $5,000 less for spending the whole year there. Then if you look at something like Sweden, it's actually even less than going to South Korea, right? So you're almost saving $12,000 over a full year. So again, it's important to not make generalizations, although we did start with that, but to look at the program that you're interested in. And you can always reach out to an advisor in our office to find programs that are close to your budget. Now, I just want to note that out-of-state students continue to pay an additional non-resident tuition supplement for semester or year-long programs, so programs that happen during the year. And there is a presentation during GLOW all about this, so check it out in our schedule if you want to learn more. All right, now I am going to talk about financial aid. So we get the question, can I use my financial aid abroad when I study abroad. And yes, all eligible students can use UCLA financial aid for any study abroad affiliated with the UC system. So this is great news. If you are a financial aid recipient, you just have to make sure that you are submitting your FAFSA or your DREAM Act by the priority deadline. So more, more on this slide on that. Uh, for UCLA travel study and global internships, please make sure that you are reading through those applications. You do have to complete an additional financial aid application that is specific to these programs. I want to return to the FAFSA for programs during the year. Um, actually, sorry, for <laughs> programs that happen uh, the summer after your senior year. If it is your last term at UCLA, you'll have to complete FAFSA one last time. Okay, so just keep in mind, if you want to study abroad the summer after your senior year, you'll have to do the FAFSA one last time. And DACA students complete the California Dream Act application. So what kind of aid can you carry over to your financial aid package? So when you are participating on a UCA pro UCEAP program or a UCLA summer abroad program, you are still a UCLA student. So as a result, you can carry over your federal, state, and university aid with the exception of federal work study. So things that carry over into your aid look like the Pell Grant. You can transfer that to all terms. The Cal Grant, it's available only during the year. It's not available for summer programs. Uh, UCLA grants and scholarships, anything else outside of that will count, except for the Blue and Gold Opportunity Plan. That one is not available for summer programs, but you can use them during the year. And any veterans benefits that you get for UCLA financial aid, you can carry over to study abroad. So another question that students wonder about and ask us is, will I get the same financial aid as I do at UCLA? So it won't be exactly the same, 
Um, the reason is because the cost may not be the same, right? So the financial aid office will adjust your financial aid package based on what the program is costing. So even students with the most financial need, for example, if your EFC is zero dollars, you may have a loan component in your financial aid package. So UCLA Financial Aid will look at your situation and they will package you for the total budget of the program. And why may that be? Why might your package look different? Well, you know, we've already talked about costs can be higher than attending UCLA. And those costs can often be higher because of expenses like airfare and transportation. And we want to point out here and, and repeat again that summer aid can be a bit more loan heavy because the Cal grant is not offered. So if you do rely on the Cal grant or grants from the Blue and Gold Opportunity Plan, they are not available during the summer. All right, I'm gonna pass it on to Andrew now. All right, thank you, Kelly. So now that we've talked about financial aid, we're gonna talk a little bit more about scholarship opportunities. So the great thing about study abroad is there are a lot of different scholarships available for students to apply for. Um, some could be academic focused, depending on the department or your major or minor. Some might be strictly based on financial need. So a FAFSA is generally required. We have some merit-based, uh, some personal narrative, as well as some special focus scholarships. So just note that if you are considering studying abroad, it's really important to do your research about the scholarships that are available so that you have all the resources available for you um, to study abroad. So as we go on here, we'll talk a little bit more about the types of uh, scholarships that we have available within our office. So more specifically, um, and we'll put the link in the chat here in just a minute, but on our webpage, you'll find that there are a lot of departmental scholarships. So there are departments. So let's say you're a political science student, maybe you're a student uh, studying public affairs or ELTS. Um, there might be a scholarship available based on your major or minor. So um, on our website, you'll see under um, Kelly just put it in the chat. Um, you can look to see if there are scholarships based on your department to assist you in study abroad. Additionally, our UCLA uh, specific programs, our UCLA IEO programs, which are the travel study and the global internship program, these are the programs that we coordinate locally with our team in the office. Um, there are some specific scholarships that um, we like to emphasize. There's more than just these two, but there's, these are two that we like to emphasize. Um, is there's the global internship program scholarship, which provides up to three thousand dollars worth of scholarship funds for recipients, as well as the travel study scholarship, which provides fifty percent uh, funding for your program fee, which ends up being about three thousand to four thousand dollars. So those are pretty substantial scholarships that we do um, love to have students applying for. Additionally, UCAP has a plethora of scholarships available for students applying to. UCAP. CAP programs, including the Global Scholars uh, Scholarship for $2,000, uh, First Generation Scholarship for $2,000, as well as various Special Interest Identity Scholarships up to $8,000. So just note, this is not the uh, full extent of the scholarships available, just a few, um, but we hope that you check out our website to learn a little bit more. Uh, please note that the scholarship deadlines do vary depending on the term you're planning to study abroad. So some of the information on our website may be current or may still be um, based off of last year, but it will provide you at least with an idea of the um, types of scholarships, the amounts available, and generally when the application deadlines are. And then there are some national scholarships that our students oftentimes applied to that we have a great success rate at, with as well. So the first scholarship I want to highlight is the Gilman Scholarship. This is from the U.S. Uh, Department of State, and it supports students who receive Pell Grant funding. Um, I'd like to mention that UCLA is one of the highest recipients uh, nationwide of Gilman Scholarships, um, and they provide up to $5,000 worth of funding. And so nationwide, it's about a 25% um, success rate of students who apply receiving the scholarship, but UCLA has done such a great job that I don't know the exact percentage, but we definitely have a higher percentage than one fourth that are receiving this scholarship. So if you are a Pell Grant recipient, highly um, encourage you to apply for the Gilman Scholarship. Additionally, we have the Freeman Scholarship, which supports students with financial need who are planning to conduct intensive language studies in Asia. 
up to $7,000 worth of funding, depending on the term that you're going abroad, the amount of time you're abroad. Um, also, Diversity Abroad is a great resource. They provide various scholarship opportunities to support diverse student populations abroad. So depending on particular identities, you may qualify for particular scholarships that are posted on the Diversity Abroad website. And then we also have the Born uh, Scholarship, which I'll talk about uh, an upcoming webinar here shortly. They provide up to $25,000, depending on the term you're going abroad. Um, they do require one year of work for the federal government after graduation, and it focuses on intensive language studies. So um, I'll talk in a second here about some of these upcoming info sessions focused on scholarships here on the next slide, actually. So if you're interested in applying for scholarships, um, earlier today, we actually had a Gilman scholarship session. So you can go to io.ucla.edu. Uh, forward slash glow to find the on-demand recording there probably within the next day or two. Um, additionally, we have the Born Scholarship info session today at 4.30 p.m. Uh, as well as on Tuesday, we have a general scholarship info session with our Associate Director of Scholarships. Um, she'll be talking a little bit more about scholarship opportunities, how to apply, um, uh, application suggestions, where to get um, you know tools to assist you um, with applying for these applications. So definitely a uh, info session I would suggest that you go to. Um, you can learn more again about our scholarships on our website. I believe Kelly already put that in the chat. And then um, there is a financial aid info session with the UCLA Financial Aid Office that will take place this Thursday, October 12th at 4 p.m. Again, these info sessions you can find at the GLOW website at ieo.ucla.edu forward slash GLOW. All right, so you have a lot of resources to find funding for your program. Now I want to talk about budgeting. This is such a valuable process, and I recommend it for everything, for life, and not just study abroad. So personal budgeting as a funding strategy is so powerful. I will open this section with asking, how many of you currently track your spending? Um, if you don't, I highly recommend that you do, because this is an important life skill where you uh, that I recommend getting into the habit now in order to plan and save up for study abroad program costs or any other kind of savings goals or large expenses that you have. So if you track your spending, you may have something like this graphic on the left hand side, which is a budget. If you don't, there is a resource that you can access. That's the UCLA Financial Wellness Program. They help students learn how to budget and keep a budget. So what exactly is a budget? So a budget is where you list out all of your monthly expenses by category to find out where your money is going. So you list out uh, all of your fixed expenses like rent, um, what else might be on here, food, um, things that you spend money on every month, and then any other kinds of savings that you are contributing to. Now, it's important to know how much money you have coming in in order to help you make those decisions of where to spend your money on and to see if you are in the negative every month or if you're able to save some money. So in a budget, you also list out all sources of your monthly income. So think campus jobs, off-campus work, any side hustles you may have, scholarships and aid that you are receiving. So if you can see here, you have in the top, you start with your income, how much money is coming in, and then you look at your expenses. And also it's important to add there any debt you have, any credit card payments, student loan payments, anything else that you are paying back. So you have debt, education, uh, miscellaneous expenses, savings, transportation. This is just one way that you can create a spreadsheet to keep track of your money coming in and your money going out every month. Now, for those of you who prefer to use something more uh, techy, you can use a budgeting app. An example is Mint, but if you Google budgeting apps, you will find so many. Again, you can reach out to the UCLA Financial Wellness Program on campus. It can help you set up a budget and learn how to budget for your time abroad. So I'm going to talk about ways to fund your program and where budgeting fits into all of this. So if you are a financial aid recipient, your bucket, financial aid only bucket, will look like the left, right? So you have some grants that is free money that the university is giving you. So that could look during the year like a Cal Grant A, a blue and gold opportunity plan grant, 
uh, during the summer. It'll include, it could include other grants outside of those. And then the financial aid office will give you, offer you loans to cover whatever your grants don't cover or any established scholarships that you have not related to study abroad. Now, if you are more proactive and you implement all of the suggestions and strategies that we have talked about today, your bucket could look different. So here at the bottom, you have the loans. That's the money that you have to pay back. That's what the financial aid office will offer you. On top of that, you have grants. So again, that will depend on whether you're going during the year or in the summer, but any grants, that's free money. You don't have to pay it back. That's here. And then the rest of it, rather than just relying on loans and grants, if you apply for scholarships, if you receive scholarship money, that's going to be a part of your bucket. And it's great because that's free money that you don't have to pay back. And then if you save money, let's say from a side job or you um, work over the summer, that is money that you can save that will lower your overall cost in terms of overall money that you have to borrow rather uh, from the financial aid office or the loan provider, really. <laughs> so let's look at a sample, sample bucket. So let's say the program cost is 13000 So with the financial aid only bucket, it could look like $5,000 worth of grants that you are getting. That is free money. You don't have to pay it back. And the rest could look like loans. So $8,000, you will have to pay the money back. You will accrue interest, which means that you are paying more than $8,000 if you are on a payment plan after you graduate. Now, if you are more proactive and you are applying to scholarships and you are saving money, how you're budgeting, right, every month and you are saving anything you can extra every month, your bucket could look a lot more different and you as a result would have less money that you have to pay back. So scholarships and grants could, let's say you get a $3,000 scholarship, that could be $8,000 total of grants and scholarships. And if you save $2,000 uh, with a summer job or during the year, if you're planning ahead, then that would decrease the amount of loans to $3,000. So these are just scenarios, right? Everything will depend on your situation. It's important that you do talk to the financial aid office. And we also have a financial aid webinar this week, as Andrew shared, where you can learn more about your particular situation. But really the point is we want to illustrate that if you are proactive and you are planning ahead, you can reduce the amount of loans that you have to take out to cover your study abroad experience. All right, that's uh, it for me. So passing it on to Andrew now. Thank you, Kelly. Now that you've uh, learned a little bit more about selecting uh, your study abroad program, financial aid and scholarships, we wanna talk about next steps. So you've done number one, attending a study abroad info session. Um, there's a lot of info sessions again, though, that are occurring this week to help you learn a little bit more about the different programs that are offered um, to help you identify not only, you know, um, the program that might be most economical that you might want to go on, but also the programs that will meet your other requirements you're looking for. So whether it's uh, getting units for your major, for GEs, maybe it's going to a particular location um, or a lang learning a language. Um, so there's a lot of programs this upcoming week. I encourage you to attend those info sessions so you can learn a little bit more about study abroad opportunities. Um, and help, will help you hopefully do step number two, which is clarifying your goals when you go abroad. Um, once you've kind of clarified your goals, you can start researching the programs on our website. Again, um, we'll have those posted on our website so you can learn about what's being offered, um, both in terms of UCAP, Global Internship Program, and the Travel Study Faculty-Led Program, um, as well as researching some of those funding opportunities. Um, I do want to say, and I forgot to mention during the scholarship section, that we always have scholarships that are under a pride for. So there's always scholarships that are like, man, we wish there was more students that are applying for these scholarships um, because we feel like you know there's a lot of qualified students out there that would, would really appreciate this funding. So definitely highly encourage you that if you do qualify for a scholarship 
to always apply. Usually the applications are quite simple, not that time consuming, um, but you're able to get a lot of you know, return on your investment for your time if you are receiving one of those scholarships. Um, as we mentioned as well, step number four is talk to an academic advisor and a major advisor. So um, both in terms of our office, um, we have advisors that can assist you with um, you know, finding what program might be helpful for you um, in terms of your goals while you go abroad, as well as you know, identifying, you know, uh, uh, lo locations or programs that might be more economical, as well as we suggest that you talk with your academic advisors. So if you are planning to take uh, specific courses abroad or hoping to get units to transfer for a particular major or minor, that you do um, talk with your academic advisors as well to make sure that you'll be on the right track. And then to complete your application. So um, the uh, the process for completing an application is a little different depending on the program you're applying for. But generally, you'll want to be applying for about nine months in advance of your study abroad program. So a great example is that for the global internship program and travel study programs, those are all both in the summer. They're opening applications here during the fall quarter. For UCAP programs for this upcoming summer and fall 2025, uh, or sorry, fall 2024, I should say, uh, those will be opening up in November as well. So you can see that planning out this upcoming summer or next fall, you're already going to want to be thinking about that this, this current fall quarter. Um, and so hopefully by planning ahead, you'll be able to search out those different scholarship opportunities, learn more about how financial aid works for um, you know, studying abroad and feel confident that you can go abroad while um, you know, not hurting the bank. And now um, we still have some time for questions. So we want to make sure that if you have any questions, please feel free to put those in the Q&A. Um, I'm sure that if you have a question, probably others also have a similar question. So feel free to put it in the Q&A chat. And while we wait for questions to come in, if you want to go to the next slide, Kelly, I think we have a, um, a listserv you can join. So if you're interested in learning a little bit more about coming events um, or learning more about you know upcoming deadlines, feel free to join our newsletter um, and we'll be sure to follow up with you um, just about what's happening this fall quarter specifically as we have a lot of deadlines and opportunities coming up in the fall to apply for next summer and fall uh, semester uh, study abroad opportunities. And while we're waiting as well for questions, wanted to mention where we're located. So we are located in Murphy Hall, 1332. So it's the back side of Murphy Hall. Um, and we do have staff there um, to assist you if you have questions, um, you know, one on one in person. Um, if you are looking for some online advising, we do have virtual advising. You'll see on the right hand side, you can go to ieo.ucla.edu forward slash contact, and you can learn more about some of our drop in advising. Um, we have various drop in advising for different locations, for instance. Um, so let's say you're looking to go to um, Japan or Korea, there's a, sp a special drop in advising session that happens weekly. Um, um, so there are uh, definitely opportunities to speak with an advisor and connect with them. Um, you can also email our office if you already know maybe a particular location or program you want to go on. And our office is happy to set you up with a one-on-one -on -one advising appointment with, with one of our um, advisors in the office. Um, our advisors are broken down um, mostly by location. Um, and so depending on the program that you're interested in, um, you can reach out to that advisor or our main office at info io.ucla.edu, and we'll connect you with the appropriate person um, to speak with. And that's it. Um, if there are any, are any other questions, um, we will be here for a couple more minutes um, just to answer those. Otherwise, thank you so much for joining us. We hope you join us for other events throughout the week, um, whether it's the info sessions. We also have an in-person event on Wednesday. We'll be at Bruin Plaza from 10, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. So feel free to see us in person. And we're happy to give you more information about studying abroad while at UCLA. Thank you, everyone. Have a good day. See you soon.